Okay, good morning guys. Are you there? Yes. Okay, I maybe I start anyway, I don't know if the others are coming. Um, okay, today it will be mostly theoretical, as I told you, and um, because we need theory to, to build the algorithm that is called Metropolis algorithm, and that it's the one that is used to simulate this in model and a lot of other statistical physical systems. Just to give you a brief motivation on why I'm doing it, I mean, uh, easing model is basically defined by a configuration of spins. So these uh, sigmas can be plus or minus one, or zero or one, depending on what you, how you define your system. And if they are uh, i1 to n, your state space is huge. Your state space is 2 power n. So basically, if you want to simulate this with the methods that we, sh that we, that we saw, so generating uh, a given configuration of spins given the, the Boltzmann distribution. So th this is what we want to do with Monte Carlo to compute, for example, magnetization. To do this computation with direct sampling uh, would require to build uh, this probability. And building this probability, it's an object that lives in this space. And we cannot, uh, we cannot store in the memory of our computer two power n uh, positions because they are too much. If we want uh, 100 spins, you are already over whatever size of whatever computer can have. So you cannot do this by direct sampling. So we need smarter, stra smarter strategies, which is exactly the, the point of uh, Metropolis, to, to, to do this kind of sampling. But to define Metropolis algorithm, we need to learn what is a Markov chain. So the object of, of today is Markov chains. Actually, we will see only the discrete case. Am I a quarter? Yes. Okay, this is, I don't know, you, did you already see, do you, do you know what is a Markov chain? Yeah. Have you heard about it, more or less? More. Because, I mean, these are super important, I mean, it's one of the basic tools for statistical physics. So I, I will very, I will tell you the very, the very basic, basic, basic ingredients, I won't go into details. You will see also in the Edgar Roland course, I think, Markov chains, maybe also in Matteo Marsili course. So we just introduced the basic ideas that I need for, for defining the algorithm. And, uh, and also I won't be formal at all. I mean, I, I'm not giving formal, like I'm not giving mathematical proofs or something. I'm just uh, on, on intuition. Because otherwise it would, take, it would require more hours, of course. And, uh, okay, so Markov changes. A, su a very general framework for describing stochastic processes. And uh, first, uh, now you know a bit of statistical mechanics, but you know that statistical mechanics work, works uh, at equilibrium, mm -hmm. which is a very special condition, not always it's present, and also for large uh, number of uh, components of your system. Markov chains instead can work only out of equilibrium, so it's dynamical. It's a process that changes with time and also can work for only also for, for very small system and so it's much more general than all the tools that you have in statistical mechanics. Um, so, uh, as I said, it's for discrete, uh, it's, for, it's, it's in, this, in the discrete case. So we are working on a state space uh, omega and we say that there are uh, one, two, three, m, states. 
And usually the, the graphical representation of this are small uh, circles. So we have state one, state two, state three, state four, for example. Yeah. And uh, what happens is that uh, there are transitions between these, sta these states. So we define, for example, a probability of jumping from one to two. P one to three, and so on and so forth. There can be also self loops. So you have to imagine that, I mean, maybe you, you are a walker in this space and you are jumping from one state to another state. So for example, if you are in one, there is probability two, one, two of going in two, probability one, one of staying in one, probability one, three of going in three, and so on and so forth. Is this the same as Sorry? Is this the same as um, I, I don't think it's the same, no, 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 no. I mean, Maybe there are some equivalence in some limit, but I don't think so, no. So, uh, of course, uh, we have to be careful. Those are probabilities. Since those are probabilities, I can define this P, I, J as the probability of jumping from I to J. Uh, I don't write, you know. And since those are probabilities, two conditions must be satisfied, which are the first one. The two conditions for defining a probability. Sorry? One is the normalization, and the second one? Greater than zero. Exactly. And normalization in this case is meaning the following, because if I'm in one, I have to normalize over the states in which I'm going. So I have to normalize over the arriving states, which is meaning uh, this condition. So this is meaning that if I'm in one, in one, the summation of the probabilities in the state in which I'm going must sum to one, which is because I, I at some point I have to choose one of those states. So I need probabilities over all the over the arriving states. I understand the normalization that is the normalization, but uh, why we have to have one than just this? Why we have one? Yeah. What? Because it. But you, do you, you don't understand the summation of this? Uh, I, I understand that this is for normalization, uh -huh. and we must have the area under under the probability yes. chart to be equal one. Exactly. Uh, but uh, what's uh, happening here that we okay, have so to? And that have that because you, you are in one, for example, yeah. and I in, in the, the case that I draw, we have three possibilities so going to two, staying in one, or going to three. Yeah. And normalization is meaning that the summation of all these probabilities must sum to one. So in this case, P11 plus P12 plus P13 must sum to one. Okay. It, it means that it, the particle would not disappear. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's in one is uh, three states. Yeah, yeah. More, you, you you can see it as a condition. Yeah, I mean you can see it as this. Con I mean if it's larger than one, you can imagine that the particle multiplies in somehow. Mm -hmm. If it's smaller than one, it disappears. Yeah, you can have this kind of interpretation, but yeah. okay. I mean in in, in it's more. Uh, I mean it's the definition. You can also start from this definition and derive all the, the consequence, sort of ac axiom of the. Yeah. Idris, you were saying something? Yeah, I guess it's more general to write that the double summation over E and G. No, no, you know, this is a, an important point. I mean, it's not necessary that you are you, you normalize over the first index. You don't care, actually. Oh, okay. No, no, this is the only two conditions. Assuming that we are in the first uh, index. Uh, no, I, I, I'm coming to this. I'm coming to this. But no, actually, the only normalization condition that we need is this one. Uh, yeah, and uh, usually it's very, it's very useful to write this as a matrix. So 
So we have P11, P1M, PMM. Maybe I can change notation uh, as sort of uh, uh, italic, I don't know. And uh, okay. Now, my system now, uh, I, I need a way to describe the configuration and how my system evolves with time. And to do so, I introduce the density probability over the states, which is something else, which I call pi uh, at time t of the state i. And this is saying the probability of being in state i at time t. And sometimes if I write this notation with, as a vector, this is basically containing all the probabilities over all the states. And in my convention is a column vector. I mean, maybe in other, you will see it later, some, some, someone else write as a row vector. I mean, but you have, to, you have to choose a convention and, stay and be, con be consistent with this one. We will choose column vectors. So at this point, I, uh, I think it's very useful to, to, for having an intuition of what's going on, to, to think about a metaphor of, of what's happening here. And I really like the metaphor in which you have to imagine that there, there are a lot of guys, a lot of walkers, a lot of agents that are jumping in this... Uh, in this system. <laughs> it's funny, but it's very useful. A lot of insects. I mean, I like to think of them as an insect that are jumping around. And uh, <laughs> this, this, uh, this probability basically is the fraction of your guys in each state. And each guy has different probabilities of jumping from one state to another state. And this is helpful to understand uh, what's, coming, what's coming now, which is called the chapman kolmogorov equation. Uh, yeah. Uh, that chapman kolmogorov equation, I can write it uh, here. Let's write it here. Which is an equation that describes the dynamics of my system. So it's describing uh, what is the distribution over my states at time t plus 1, for example, in the state j, given the distribution at the previous time step. And, and this is the following formula, and I, let me write it and I'll explain it. The uh, ij so basically what's happening here is that think as, as, as at, at the system at time t so this pi t is the number of guys in the state i is the fraction of guys in the state i and if you, if you multiply the number of guys in the state i by the probability that the guy jumps from i to j, you, you get basically the fraction of guys that are coming from the state i to the state j. So basically, to compute which is the number of guys in state 1 at, at the next time, I need to consider all the people that are coming from all the other states. So I need the guys in 3 times the fraction that they will jump to 1, guys in 1, Time the fraction that we stay will stay in one, guys in and stop. Yeah. But this is the, the intuition behind the, this equation, which is a form of Chapman Kolmogorov equation. Actually, there are other definitions of Chapman Kolmogorov, but we will see this one. So this is the, the, the describing my dynamics. 
and uh, actually you can now guess why I introduced uh, the matrix and the vector because this equation can be, can be written in a matrix form which is much more compact and useful because this one is a matrix product in a way actually is a matrix product and actually the chapman kolmogorov with, with my notation reads like this it should be this one because I need the transpose of P because here the index of summation is the first one but it should be correct if those ones are column vectors and uh, Yes. But if you know this, you actually know all the story of your system because you can write the pi in the same way. So this will be p p p p pi p minus one, and you can you can iterate this process, and at the end you have p t power t plus 1 right excuse me could you describe this formula again yeah and we had that finance yeah no yeah exactly okay now this is the, the this model. equation component by component i mean if you if you explicit the matrix product um, matrix product yeah we, we have a product matrix. between this this matrix and this vector so which is meaning that you are multiplying a line by all of this for example for first element you have the summation of this line times this column and you get this so and you you do this for all the indexes and so this is component by component and this is uh, like writing all the equation together and this is a transpose of it's the transpose because, uh, yeah, I mean, if you define as a column vector, uh, you realize that you need a transpose because you are summing over the first index here. Actually, uh, the matrix product is over the second index, so you have to consider the, the, the PJDI, and to do this, you need a transpose. But it's just notation. There is nothing very profound here. It's just... Uh, Okay, um, so yeah, what I was saying before, you now realize that there is an, a, a dynamics, it's a system that changes with time, and which is something completely different from statistical mechanics. Uh, and actually, in, in principle, if you know the initial conditions and you know the probabilities, you can solve your system, you can solve uh, the dynamics and how it evolves with time. So now I um, a few comments. Uh, probably uh, you already heard the, the word uh, Markovian, Markov, and this is a synonym. Synonym. I mean, it's the definition of a of a of a process without memory. Maybe you already heard. I think you already heard this. Without what? Without memory. And the reason is that Markov chain, I think, is the most general pro stochastic process without memory which is meaning that the story doesn't depend on the past. So for example, if I am in the state three and I'm coming from state one, state, state one, state one, I have the same uh, uh, future, future, uh, future outcome than if I am in the state three and in the past I was, uh, no, here is not coming, I mean, let's go another. And if my story is that I was in one and then I'm in three, and another another story is that I was in four and, uh, and now I'm in three, but since I'm in three, I, I forget what is my past story and my future story. It will be the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. 
independently of what are my previous uh, steps or my previous states that I did. So this is an important, I mean, it's, it's the, the, the main limitation of this model, basically. But actually, it is the condition that allows to solve a lot of stuff and to prove a lot of theorems. So remember Markovian, it means without memory, and, uh, but you will see it again for sure, and in a more formal and mathematical rigorous way. And uh, yeah, I also wanted, I mean, this, is, this can describe a lot of system. It, it, I don't know, for example, in biology, it's, it, it's used a lot. I think Edgar will show you the example of an ion channel, and that can be open or closed. So uh, open or closed are two states, and are rates of opening or closing. So this can be described as a Markov chain. Uh, I don't know, games, this can be the hand of a game of a poker game and if you draw another card you change your hand so, i mean you can describe a lot of things this kind of structure it's very general and also we will see you can describe also an easing model all right so let me show you the most simple possible example in this context which actually may be yeah, the, the most simple and non-trivial example, which is the, the, the two-state chain. We, let's see. So I have probability P of jumping from 1 to 2. Probability Q of jumping from 2 to 1. So I'm asking you, what is this probability? Probability of staying in 1. 1 minus P. And the same here, 1 minus P. So from here you can see, uh, I mean, uh, the, the question of Idris can be answered in a more, you can see from here that you only need the normalization over the arrival states, which is when if I'm in one, I need the normalization over going in two and remi remaining in one. I don't care about the arriving state, I mean, this probability plus these other probability don't normalize and they don't need to normalize. So you can write the transition matrix, which will be P, uh, one, uh, uh, sorry, one minus P, uh, P, Q, one minus Q. And let's say that, uh, of course, I can write uh, pi t as xt1 minus xt, because, of course, the, the, the distribution over the states has to be nor normalized as well. So if I know xt, which is the probability of staying in 1, I know the probability of staying in 2, because it's 1 minus x. Do you agree with this? Because this, again, is a probability distribution yeah. over 1 and 2. Yeah. And as all the probability distribution, it has to be normalized. Yeah. So you know that uh, phi 1 plus phi 2 equal 1. So if you know 1, you automatically know the other one because it comes from the, the normalization. And we also say that uh, my starting, my initial condition is something like S1 minus S. Of course, I'm also the initial condition is normalized. What is the initial condition? 
uh, is the probability distribution at the beginning. How you initialize your, your system. Okay, now question for you. Uh, I show you that I can compute pi t in this way. How can you solve this equation? Do you know a way? I mean, a way, an easy way. I mean, here now you have a matrix. Let's say that we want to solve it generally for whatever time. How can I compute uh, this matrix multiplied a lot of time? Eigenvalue. Sorry? Eigenvalue. Exactly, yes. So you have to decompose, you have to do what is called the eigenvalue decomposition. Uh, let's go there. It's something from uh, linear algebra. So basically, you can write a matrix. This is a square matrix. You can write a square matrix in this way. Well, those are uh, three other matrices with the same uh, dimension, where D is a, is a di diagonal matrix. And the lambdas are the, eigen the eigenvalues. And this, let, uh, how can I write something like, uh, So you are using uh, u power uh, j for the eigenvector j. So basically you are putting the eigenvector in columns. Matrix S is defined like this. So u11, u12, u1n is the first uh, eigenvector which is corresponding with the first eigenvalue. which is basically mean it's, it's meaning that uh, but I think you already seen this, 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 this formula, right? So why I'm writing this? Because if I now compute the this multiplication power t is like uh, s uh, s d uh, s minus one. Now I'm going here. Uh, yeah, but you understood. You have another term s d uh, s minus one. A lot of times. And you realize that each consecutive s minus 1 and s uh, disappears by definition of the inverse matrix. So this one and this one becomes the identity matrix that basically disappear, doesn't contribute with, to, the, to the multiplication. This one disappears with this one. And so basically what remains is s d power t s minus 1. Now this is minus the inverse, and I, I'm cancelling out uh, s minus one with s yeah. because it's it's the definition of the inverse. Yeah. I mean the product is the unit unitary matrix. Okay. I I think he was asking if the exponent was a value. So he is asking if the exponent was uh, this one. I uh, know this one is the time, yeah. is the number of, because d this d don't disappears, yeah. don't doesn't disappear. 
so the exponent is remaining and actually it's very easy to compute this matrix because since it's diagonal it's uh, lambda 1 power t lambda 2 power t lambda n power t So the, that's the trick. So if you are able to write, to decompose your matrix in, uh, in this eigenvalue, this is called the eigenvalue decomposition, you can compute the, expo the, the, yeah, the, expo the exponentiation in an easy way. And in, the, in this case, it's quite easy to compute what, what are the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the, the, the matrix. I, I did it for you and I can write down the solution. Let me cancel maybe here. So at the end you get x dt. which is So here, in this way, you are able to solve the two, two, two states Markov chain. And uh, you already see something super useful and the, the, the reason why Markov chains are so powerful. And the reason is the following. If you try to plot uh, xt, So what happens if t is large? Actually, this number here is always between minus 1 and 1, yeah. unless uh, the boundaries, but we will see the boundaries later. So it's a, num it's a number with a module which is less than 1. So for t going to infinite, this is going to 0. All of this is going to 0. This is going to 0. So also this term disappears. And actually, your x becomes a constant. So there is an asymptote here, which is uh, q over p q plus q. And it happens something quite important. Here you see here the dependency on the initial condition is here, so s. And actually, my asymptote doesn't depend on the initial condition which is meaning that if I start from here, for example, I finish here, if I start from here, I finish here, I always finish, it, finish in the same asymptote. Okay. And now we are seeing what's happening here. We are reaching what is called the stationary condition, the stationary distribution of the, of the chain. So repeating basically what's happening there is that if I wait a sufficiently large amount of time, I lose the dependency on the time. My x dt becomes a constant, so it doesn't change with time anymore. I'm reaching, I'm reaching the stationary condition. So let me define what is a stationary condition. You know that was the chapman kolmogorov
I define stat condition, stat uh, let's call it uh, stati uh, stationary distribution. Pi star. The distribution that satisfy pi star. So basically, is the distribution that loses the dependency on time. So you see, this is the condition that is saying that pi star at time t plus one is the same of t star at time t. Okay, so now you realize that in our case of the two, two, two state uh, system, my stationary condition is the one here at, at, at infinite and in, is the one in which xt is equal to q divided by p plus q. And now let me state the most important theorem, super important theorem of Markov chain. Theorem, which says the following I, I won't prove and I won't be formal but let me let me state it in the following way if the chain is well behaved Behaved, I mean uh, the term ergodic. I, I will I will give you an intuition of what it's meaning. What is the meaning of ergodic? Then you have that uh, pi star always exists and is unique. And then you have that for whatever initial condition pi, zero, the limit t going to infinity of pi t is equal to pi star. So I mean it's some I mean it's the mathematical way to say that if the, the chain is ergodic, if I wait for sufficient for a sufficient number of time steps, at some point I will reach the stationary distribution, which is only one and only and always exists. And this is very, very important because this is saying that actually in most of the cases I don't care about the dynamic. I mean I know that at the end I will finish here. So maybe it's very difficult to solve the Chapman Kolmogorov. But I don't care because I, I know that at some point I will finish in my stationary state. And instead of solving this, this equation, I have to solve this equation, which is easier. Because actually this equation, this is basically the equation for the first, for the eigenvalue one. So basically, the, 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 the stationary distribution is the eigenvector corresponding to the first eigenvalue, which is 1. So, I mean, I'm reducing the complexity of my computation because there is this super important theorem. That's it's guaranteeing that if I wait for sufficient time, I will go there and I will stay there. And I lose the dependency on time. In that formula on both sides, we have the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's this formula in which I want to, to, to cut out the dependency on time. So I get this formula. Okay. And actually, this, this theorem proves that there is only one solution to this equation, and that this one solution always exists, and I always will converge to it. Right. Okay. 
And so the t t must be equal to one, yeah. Uh, no, why? Mm -hmm. No, no. I mean this. I mean this is a matrix equation. Yeah. You know p. It's uh, something like like before it was p one minus p p. I mean yeah, if something. But you don't know these two vectors. So it's like solving an eigenvector equation. I mean, your 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 you don't know this vector, and you have to. Yeah, yeah, like that, like that. It's just like like a second eigenvalue. Yeah, it's exactly like this. And again, uh, you see that you lose the dependency on the initial condition, which is something that it's non trivial. Okay. This is kind of like the central limit theorem. But uh, no, no. No, uh, actually no, because I mean central limit theorem is giving you a shape of the distribution. Mm -hmm. Here you, it just says that uh, there is a solution. No, it's, it's, it's not. Actually, maybe, maybe yeah, I, may, I don't know. I want to say anything. Uh, Can I yeah, sure. Um, that, that equation uh, um, phi star equal to C phi star C. This one? Yeah. Uh, if the eigenvalue 1 is degenerate, it's immediately not. You are, uh, yeah, good question. Oh. But, good question, but uh, uh, actually here uh, you are exploiting uh, the fact that this metric is special. Uh, is special because one, all the elements are greater and equal of, uh, than zero, and two, you have the norma norm normalization condition. This is called stochastic matrix, okay. and there is a linear algebra theorem which is called perron frobenius theorem. I don't know if you ever heard about it, but there is a mathematical theorem which is saying that in this case uh, you can prove uh, that the maximum I the maximum eigen value is one and it's not degenerate. Actually, this is how you can prove this theorem, basically. Because if you know this, uh, you, basically, uh, uh, you basically prove this theorem. Mm. I, I mean, it's, it's like this. So, C, C of x, I never have zero elements. Zero? The, the C matrix uh -huh. never have zero elements. No, no, I can have zero elements. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, there is still this condition of ergodicity. I mean, it, uh, this condition on ergodicity is imposing uh, a condition on, on the structure of this matrix. And for example, it does not to be like the um, a block matrix, for example. I mean, it's we are going to mathematics, but. If this, your system is ergodic, this is imposing uh, uh, another condition on your matrix. And given that condition, uh, you can prove the, the perron frobenius theorem. So you have only one, the maximum eigenvector, the eigenvalue is one, and it's uh, the only one. But in general, you can have zero elements, because uh, there can be some probability of, I mean, some states can be not connected. Okay, let, let me spend just two words about ergodicity. So we won't define what is the meaning of ergodicity because it would, it would require more, more time, a lot of more time. But we can see it from here, in a way. Because this idea, this, this, this idea of stationary state works in all the cases but in two special cases. So which are the cases in which this equation doesn't convert to my asymptote? Can you see it from there? There are two. No, I mean, this is fine. If both are one half, uh, you can get uh, zero, zero power t, it's fine. Now you are in the right. Right direction. 
I mean, no, you are in the right direction. I mean, this works if what there is inside this parenthesis is less than one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Otherwise, this doesn't disappear. So what happens, for example, that if this is one, you don't have a, a stationary condition. Mm -hmm. So let me write again the two-state system. So when is the case that uh, this is equal to 1? When P and Q are 0. But basically what's happening if P and Q are 0? We don't have this. So we have something uh, very ugly. So we cannot jump from one state to the other. And we are saying in this case that our our chain is not uh, is not connected, is not irreducible. The, the right word is irreducible. So this is one condition for being ergodic. I need to reach all the state of my chain. If if the, I have two disconnected component, my theorem about stationary distribution doesn't work anymore. But actually works for the separately between the two disconnected components. Okay, again, this is not formal, just to give you an intuition of what's, its meaning, of what's the meaning of ergodicity. So first one, I have something disconnected. And second one, that can give me problems. It's quite a bit tricky. Hmm? Yeah, I think... Q is much between... I mean, no, remember that Q and P are always between 0 and 1. S, uh, I mean, uh, no, it's S. Uh, but I mean, there, 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 can happen, there, I mean, there is something even worse than before. Uh, if uh, negative. negative, it's fine because if, if, it's, if it's a negative number, at some point the modulus it will go to zero. Oh. But if it's negative, but equal to one, if it's equal to minus one, mm -hmm. has something really na nasty. I mean, mm -hmm. not nasty, but. If it, this is equal to minus 1, basically t power uh, at, at even t, you have uh, uh, you are multiplying uh, uh, even time minus 1, so you have uh, plus 1. At odd t, you have minus 1. So basically, you are seeing that you are jumping between two, two axes. So basically, the, the what's happening in that case? So this is happening if p and q are equal both to one, which is this other case. Which is saying that. Uh, so imagine that your your initial condition is being. It's just fluctuating. Yeah, exactly. I mean, imagine that. Uh, yeah, you're jumping, uh, you're always switching the, the probability, which is, I mean, if you, if your initial configuration is with probability 1, I mean 1, at the next step, everyone jumps in 2, and nobody stays in 1. Yeah. Next step, again, 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 again. So basically, you never reach the stationary condition. This is saying that there is a mathematical word for this condition, that is, that the, your, chain, your chain is periodic. And this is the second. Uh, the I mean, first case was that P first, there, was first case was there is no connection. With, I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, you have two separate components. Um, and the amount of both of them was zero. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Because you here you have one power t, so you never uh, kill the the factor here. But this is for saying, unless these two special cases that makes the, 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 the chain not ergodic, in all the other cases, your theorem uh, works and you reach it to the stationary condition. What time is it? Okay. Okay, now I'm 
I'm telling you something, last thing that we need to introduce, uh, it's the concept of detail balance. Can I erase here? This condition is the last super important concept of uh, Markov chains and is the following condition. Let me write, then we will see it. states those are the transition probability so this is saying that for each pair of states understand this condition, let's first uh, learn a property of this condition, which is the following. Let me write the stationary, um, the stationary condition that was uh, here, pi star equal to pi t pi star. Let's write this condition in components, which is the following, pi star i uh, equal summation over j uh, uh, J I J should be this one, yes. This is the conditioning components. And let me do the following. So let me bring uh, this part in this other side of the equation and put this part inside the summation in this way So you realize that those two expressions are equivalent because if you make the, the if you make the, the summation collapse on this term, these probabilities are normalized. So they go goes, uh, I mean they, they sum to one, and you get I mean you bring the other the pi in the other side and you get the same equation as before. So basically this this is another way of writing the stationary condition. you immediately realize something which is the following if you have detail balance what's happening this is true for every i and j so this is zero for every i and for, for whatever elements of the summation and so the condition, the stationarity condition is satisfied. 
So basically, if the tail balance holds, this implies stationary condition. You are cancelling out it one by one all the elements of your summation. And what is important is that the inverse is not true. We will see the example in the two-state system, but you can see it from here. I mean, it can, there, there can be cases in which this, uh, I mean, each term of the summation, maybe this is something greater than zero, but then you have another term of the summation which is uh, less than zero and cancel out the other term. I mean, you, you can have com different combination you can satisfy this condition, this, this equation for stationality, even, even if the, the detail balance doesn't hold. Okay, I will show you an example later. Let me, um, let me finish to say that uh, detail balance is also say, um, it's sort of synonymous of uh, chain at equilibrium. also saying to you that equilibrium and stationarity are not equivalent. Actually, equilibrium is something stronger than stationarity. Mm -hmm. if, your sta if your chain is at equilibrium, it's stationary. Mm -hmm. But if, you're sta if it's stationary, it's not necessarily at equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So let's see, like intuitively, why it's, this is the case. And I think in this case, the, your, the metaphor with the guys jumping on, your, on the chain helps a lot. Because we can, we, can, we can see from this condition the following. Uh, so let's imagine that uh, you have two generic states, i and j. So basically, this is giving, I mean, it's pi i times pi ij. So basically, this is giving the fraction of guys that are jumping from i to j, as before, because I mean, it, it was the met metaphor of, uh, of before. So this is the fraction of guys that are jumping from there to there, and this is the fraction of guys that are jumping from there to there. So detailed balance is meaning that you have the same number of people going from one side to the other side. In other words, you have the same flux of probability. I mean, the, the net flux is zero. But you can have also this case. For example, if you have three states, If you have three states, it can happen that the detail balance doesn't hold. So for example, there is a net flux of probability from one to two. But maybe there is a net, fl net flux uh, from two to three and a net flux from three to two. So you have a sort of loop that actually guarantees that uh, the number of people in each state is always constant, so your chain is stationary. But it's not the equilibrium, meaning that there is a net flux which is positive. I mean, there is an, uh, a sort of movement of people going around, but this is not uh, uh, stopping the, the chain to stay in the stationary state, because for stationarity, you only need that the number of people in each state are always constant during the time. Is it uh, more or less clear? But you, you will see that again, for sure. But it's important that you now 
that, that you will remember that stationarity and equilibrium are something different, that equilibrium is related with detail balance, stationarity is related with the equation uh, that I wrote before, one imply the other and the other doesn't imply the other. Okay, this is a, maybe one week of lectures in one hour, but I, I managed more or less. Ah, no, yeah, I mean, the most important point of all, uh, why I introduced detail balance. Uh, I mean, do you remember the, the reason that I made before about stationarity? I know that the, if, the, the, if I know that the, the chain is ergodic, so I know that it will reach the stationarity, so it's, a, it's an easier way to compute the distribution for long times. I can make a similar reason, reason here. If I know that the chain satisfies the detail balance, I actually can compute the stationary distribution in a much simpler way, which is by solving this system of equation. So let me show the case for two... So, Assume that uh, you know that the two level, the two, let's come back to the two state chain. I know that here the detail balance will, will be reached. So let me write the detail balance. One is x, remember I can uh, use x and one minus x for the two. So pij is p, and uh, pi j is one minus x, and pji is q. And you, use this, you can use this equation to find the stationary distribution. I mean, it's trivial and you get x equal to q divided by p. So you see? Exactly. I mean, assume, I mean if you know that your, your chain reached the detail balance, you have a super easy way to compute stationary distribution. You see, we can do this in one line, in zero line, basically. While in the previous case you need to solve the alien vector, which is something that you can do, but it's for sure harder. Okay, and basically the detail balance is the condition over which we will build the, the metropolis algorithm that I am now explaining to you. What time is it? Uh, I have, uh, yeah enough time. So the algorithm belongs to the class of Monte Carlo algorithm called the Markov chain. Monte Carlo. For friends, MC, MC. The idea of all this class of algorithms is the following. So it's a way of generating samples. So as, as always, you have x that you want to generate from p of x. 
and that is leading in omega. So the idea is that I build a Markov chain over the state space omega such that the stationary distribution of your Markov chain is your distribution that you want to send from. So like for giving you an intuition, let's assume that we want to generate this configuration for the easing model. So those are all the configuration of plus one, minus one. What's mean? I'm building a Markov chain over this state space, which is meaning that I'm in a configuration of plus one, minus one. Then I have given probability of jumping to Confi or other configuration, maybe switching a spin of just one of just one spin. I can jump there. I can jump there. I can jump. So you can build a Markov chain over your big state space, and at some point you will reach the stationary distribution, and you want that this condition is satisfied. That the stationary distribution is exactly the probability distribution that you want to set. And so here you are seeing the trick, because. Before, to, to make direct sampling, I have to build uh, this distribution. Yeah. While if I'm jumping around on my, my state space, I can get sample. I mean, the, the sample that I get can get are exactly the state in which I'm jumping. I'm jumping in a new state, I, I, I use this as a sample. I'm jumping in another state, I'm using this as a sample. And I, I'm sure that I'm satisfied in the probability because the stationary distribution is, uh, is the... the distribution that I want to sample. And in this way, I can forget to compute directly my, my, my distribution. I mean, I'm not writing this. I'm just writing my transitions between states. I mean, this is the idea. You will understand better when you will see an example. Actually, a lot of time happens that it's the case. Um, okay, is the idea of MCMC. The idea of Metropolis is the following. It's also called Metropolis. Metropolis Hastings. And the way the trick that I'm using to, to build this Markov chain is the detail balance. So detail balance is saying that pi star x t x y equal to pi star y t y x. Actually, you see that I have the freedom of choosing my transition probabilities. I still didn't say anything about transition probabilities. I want to choose the transition probability in a way that the stationary condition is the probability of sampling. And for, and for doing so, I'm writing down the detail balance. And from the detail balance, I have a condition of my transition probabilities. I'm also imposing the fact that I want that P is equal to the uh, stationary distribution. So let's write that like this. And it's also saying that P x y So again, if I choose the transition probability in satisfying this condition, I'm building a Markov chain that will have 
pi star as a distance, this stationary distribution. In, in this system, we have only x and y. I mean, if there are no Sure, sure, sure. I mean, pi are always normalized. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, you can realize that here there can be a problem of normalization because I have ratio. But let me write down what is the recipe of Metropolis for solving this, uh, this, this condition. And uh, Metropolis says that I can choose a p x y equal to the minimum of 1 and py over px. And uh, you can see immediately that I can compute, for example, uh, dxy, dyx. And if uh, Px is larger than Py, then what happened? Uh, Pxy, uh, P in Pxy, Px is larger than Py, which is meaning that this number is smaller than 1, so I have to choose 1. So this is 1 over in Pyx. I have that, uh, of course, I mean, this is, uh, and in PYX you have to switch the two, so you re realize that uh, in PYX this is uh, less than one, so I have to choose uh, PY over PX, so we have PY over PX that comes here. Should be like this. Yes, yes, PX is good, okay, but if you write P, YX, so, right? So the first one gives one, the second one gives... Uh, uh, no, no, sorry, it's... The, uh, no, the first one, the Px larger than Py, is meaning that this is smaller than one. Sorry, yes, it's the opposite. Yes. So in the second case, this is larger than one, so you have to choose one. Mm -hmm. And, by, and you see that if you consider Py larger than Px, you have uh, that in this case you have 1, and in this other case you have uh, again uh, Py over Px, so Py goes here. So you are, say, you are saying that if I choose this, con this, this shape for the transition probability, I'm satisfying this condition, and if I satisfy this condition, I'm satisfied the yield balance, and, uh, and I'm fine. And since you are simulating a statistical mechanical system, you can write down the condition in this other formula. You know that those ones are the Boltzmann distribution, so uh, E power and beta minus beta Hamiltonian. You see that here there is a ratio, so this is smart because it's saying that the, uh, the partition function uh, cancel out. And so all you need to know is uh, Ok, 
Okay, so you see the idea. You, you are in a configuration, you know the energy of that configuration, so you try to change a bit the configuration, so we have a new configuration, a candidate configuration which is Y, so maybe you flip a spin in your resin system, and you move to this other configuration by, by, by using this probability. Then you change again configuration and you move to this other configuration by using this probability. And at the end, you have a Markov chain that goes to the stationary state. Very well. Now, um, Uh, so you see a lot of advantages, you don't need to know the partition function, you, so you don't have to compute the partition function. You don't have to know, to, to enumerate all the sp states of your state space. Okay, I can show you an example, I, I mean, yeah, I'm not giving you the exercise, but actually I can show you the um, two, two, level en two energy level systems solved with Metropolis. And um, actually, you will see that I mean, everything seems nice, but there will be problems. And I will be showing you which are the problems and how to solve the problems that you will get. Okay, sharing the screen. You can find any way, uh, as usual, uh, these notebooks in the folder. Sorry? No, uh, no, in the two-level system model, there is the, um, the one that I'm showing you now. I don't know, I didn't update the easing. I don't know. Uh, ah, there is nothing. Okay, I will put it. Um, solution for Metropolis. Yeah, Can we have a five minute break? No, I mean, well, but we are finishing in ten minutes. Okay. Yes, yeah, in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, as you prefer. Um, there, is a, there, is, there is a talk at uh, four. A colloquium at four. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know. And then we have one post colloquium at five thirty as well. What do you mean by post colloquium? Uh, with the speaker? <laughs> yes. Uh, <okay. laughs> I, I think he's a super cool guy, Coster. Uh, in fact, phase transitions in this make a lot of sense. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he is a statistical physicist. Actually, he's a super strong climber. I mean, he's, he's one of the most important climbers uh, in the world. This is crazy. I mean, he won the Nobel Prize, yeah. and also there is some route in mountains that yeah. are called Kurt Kosterlitz route. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, but I mean, I will be very, very brief. I can show. I can only show you the the pseudo code of Metropolis. Now, before I want to tell you something else. So you remember that in the two-level system, um, you simulated it by sampling the, the energy from the probability of uh, the energy. So now, instead, with Metropolis, let's try to solve it by sampling uh, directly the microstates. So my state space is the configuration of zero or epsilon for each particle. And I want to generate samples by, you, by, by sampling from the Boltzmann, where you have the Hamiltonian as usual. So you, you generate, the, your samples are an, a whole microstate. So the idea for the, um, a step of Metropolis, by step I mean that uh, I'm starting from a state, and my, my metropolis ste st uh, step is generating a new state, and then I have another state, and this chain of states is my Markov chain. So here, metropolis step is meaning that I'm starting from this mu, 
the, the, my parameters are, are as usual the temperature and uh, the energy of the first uh, uh, the, the, the energy level uh, so and what I do is the following so I have mu I choose one particle at random and I switch the energy of the particle from 0 to epsilon or from epsilon to 0 then I'm doing the following I'm computing the energy difference between the two and if I compute in the energy difference you immediately realize that you are computing the, this number here ok, the, the guys are not seeing let me stop for a while if you are computing the, the energy difference you are uh, computing this number here and you realize is that, that if this number is negative this quantity is positive and so this, is, this will be 1 so what's happening is that if this difference of energy is smaller than 0 you accept with probability 1 the new state so your metropolis, uh, your metropolis step is uh, returning the new state in which the energy of the particle is switched instead if the, the energy, the difference in energy is positive the same thing. then then you have to accept the new state with this probability you have to move to the new state with the probability that your metropolis is prescribing so if the energy is smaller than zero accept the change if it not so you have to generate a uniform random number if the uniform random number is smaller than p uh, which is the, the p there you accept the change, otherwise you don't accept the change and you remain in the same state as before yes. so the, ch the chain is basically not moving, it's a, it's a self loop on the same state yes. with, probability. with a given yes. probability the probability that is given exactly by e power minus beta so actually it's quite simple so let me show you some plots Uh, so you can generate, for example, a, a, an energy trajectory. So you start from a random initial condition. So a random initial condition, uh, a state, uh, I mean, here are zeros or one instead of zero of, or epsilon. I, I just need to multiply by epsilon at the end. It's so I'm iterating over some time. I'm doing a metropolis step metropolis step is exactly what I described so I start from a state and I'm returning the new state with the, all the, the, the procedure that I told you and then I'm, I'm building a trajectory for the energy where I'm uh, each time I'm computing the energy of my microstate and the energy is just the summation times epsilon so in this way I'm, I'm computing a trajectory for the energy Okay, you can try, you, you, you want to do, you, you don't know actually that there will be a problem, so you do it without... I see one problem right here. Tell me. State is a randomly generated... Yes, state. you start and from a random... you're using state again, and then you're changing state. Yeah, yeah, everything is random. Yeah, you start from a random condition. And the, but then you're trying to fix it. What do you mean by fix it? Fix it, uh, I mean you're trying to, so you first generate it randomly. Yeah, you start from a, you have start, to start from, start from somewhere. somewhere. But then all the others are deterministic. No, 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 they are not. I mean, they are not because you you are you have a random state state. Then you do a metropolis step uh, step, which is meaning choosing at random one of the energy, one of the particles, mm -hmm. flipping, okay. and then accepting or rejecting with a given probability. This, this is not determinist. Yes, okay, okay, no, but this is the point. 
Yeah, I mean, so everything depends on the initial condition. Exactly. So, anyway, it's not random. Okay, yeah, okay, I mean, that's very good, very good. And you can see it from here. It's, it, it's exactly what I wanted to show you. So, uh, the blue one is a single trajectory for the energy. So, actually, um, you remember, here there are 100 particles. So, 50 is uh, the, um, the chaotic configuration, so all the particles are... So a random state here is, is meaning that I'm starting from the high temperature. So you need time to go, to go away from your initial configuration. So this is a very important problem. If you want to use uh, these states as samples, mm -hmm. you have to wait some time. Yeah. So how can you compute this time? So you can compute, for example, the average energy. So you see that the average goes down until it reaches an asymptote. And so you say, okay, my samples have to start, have to start from 400 time steps. So whenever I, I'm generating a, um, a Markov chain in this way, I have to discard the first 400. And you will see that for easy model, you have to discard a lot of, a lot of stuff. So he, this is the first problem. You need time for equilibration. But I mean, it's the same principle as the two-level system. You start from an initial condition, and you, you need time to reach the stationary condition. So this is, and the actually, I mean, you are saying that your probability is the stationary condition, so you have to wait some time such that the stationary condition is reached. So this is the first one. You need, you need to wait time for equilibration, and then there is a, a, a second more uh, subtle problem, yes, which is related with correlation. Uh, it's something that maybe I didn't tell you yet. Uh, actually, if you want to use the Monte Carlo formula, the sample average, one condition that uh, it's, it's, is required for the conversion to the true average is that your samples are independent. If your samples are not independent, the sample average doesn't work anymore. And in, in this case, your samples are not independent because you see that you are, you are moving very close to the next, I mean, your, your next sample, it will be very similar to, to you. I mean, you, you move from one configuration to another configuration, which is very similar, to another configuration, which is, again, very similar. So you have to keep track of this correlation. And to do so, you can compute uh, the correlation. Uh, do, you, uh, do you know, in, for example, the temporal autocorrelation? This is the correlation function. I hope you are familiar with that. I mean, I hope you know what's, what's the meaning. So basically, this quantity is saying, is saying that uh, if, if this quantity is equal to 1, Sorry? Even in linear regression, we have this problem of Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. There are three major problems. Yeah, but yeah, but this is a usual problem. Yeah, you have to remove correlations if yeah. you want to. And the temporal autocorrelation is saying how much the energies of two time steps are correlated. So if this rho is equal to one the energy is basically the same. If this, this goes to zero, the energies are uncorrelated. And you see this, be, I mean, uh, it's basic statistics, maybe you, I don't know if Marsili told you about this. But if the energies are independent, actually, the, the uh, oh my god, I don't remember, the covariance, not the covariance, the, I mean, the, the, the average of the two quantities, uh, if the two quantities are independent, the average of the two quantities are equal to the product of the averages. So if those are independent, this is, and those are no, and this is normalized by between uh, 1 and 0, and you are enforcing this by dividing by the standard deviation. So you can try to plot the autocorrelation. The code to compute the autocorrelation is a bit longer because you have to compute uh, you have to compute this quantity, you have to compute this quantity, this quantity, the standard deviation. 
so you get a lot of time, a lot of stuff. And at the end, you get something like this. So as I told you, if it's one, you see if the the two samples are, are very close in time, so time step is the time difference between the two samples. The correlation, the uh, correlation is one, so which is saying that basically they are very similar, almost equal. But if you wait for 300 steps, you lose correlation. So these are the two big problems. If you really want to write down a metropolis algorithm, you have to build this Markov chain, but you have to discard a lot of samples. You have to discard the first samples, that is the time re and re which is necessary for equilibration. Then you take this as a sample, so wait for the, te the, te the time for the correlation to disappear. Then you get another sample that wait for the same time for the correlation to disappear, that you get another sample. So you see that it's very not, it's not so efficient. It's much less efficient than uh, direct sampling. But it has the big advantage of working in this case of the huge state space because it doesn't require to know the whole the state space. But actually, it's pretty. I mean, in this case, it's pretty fast. Uh, then, then the exercise is computed in the average, the average energy by using the, your samples. So maybe I can show you. Actually, it will, it will, it will need some time to. Let's see. Okay, done, done to make this part maybe run. I mean the final part is fix a temperature, compute the energy in this way. To change the temperature, compute the energy in this other way, and uh, plot the usual curve. So the energy, the average energy as a function of the temperature. And you again you can compare it with theory and you say that everything works and you are happy. But I want to show you if this finishes in a uh, few seconds, I hope. I want to show you the problems of um, equilibration and uh, uncorrelation. And this is not finishing. This is actually quite long, okay. Okay, so here I'm choosing number of particles, choosing epsilon. Let's say um, we have 10 samples and the bar mean, I mean, now let's do it for uh, a reasonable uh, T bar mean is the time that I have to wait for equilibration and T correlation is the time that I have to wait for uncorrelation. So you are seeing, seeing that it's quite fast, and this is generating your curve. For example, try to choose. Let's try to choose. Uh, I don't know three as a time time for bar mean. So instead of considering, uh, I mean, of reaching equilibrium, I choose a bad time, and you see that. Uh, I mean, it's not so bad. But actually, at the beginning here, there is a, a shift. Mm -hmm. You can do worse, for example, by choosing the... I was expecting this worse, but anyway. I mean, you see that there is a shift, so you are not happy with it. So let's come back to 300. And maybe, and you see also if you reduce the time for correlation, uh, you have something very noisy. I mean, if you make this your sample not, I mean, if you not don't have, if you have correlation, you get something very noisy, so you're not happy. Actually, the theorem that says that the square root of the error goes down with the, the inverse of the square root of number of samples, if your samples are not are correlated, doesn't hold anymore, so you have much more error and much more noise. But this is basically everything. And if you increase the number of samples, 
get the right one. Okay, and this is one. And last uh, last lecture it will be about uh, easy model. I still have to maybe I, I can give you some part as exercise. I mean I have to decide uh, how much I will tell you and how much you have to do. Okay, I'm leaving the room.